Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a science fiction thriller film, Settlers. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Nine-year-old Remy lives on an isolated Mars settlement with her father and mother. No neighbors, no communication with the rest of Mars, much less with faraway Earth. Mother's greenhouse is struggling to produce vegetables. They have tried to raise pigs, and only have one. Despite the tough and rough living circumstances, this tight-knit family cherish their simple and happy life as some of the earliest settlers. At night, father teaches Remy about the constellation, and mother plays acoustic guitar. Evidently, humankind has so fouled up its birthplace, that it is now all but uninhabitable. So father thinks they are lucky to settle down on Mars, and he believes that one day the Martian society will flourish like that of the Earth. Little Remy is curious about the outside world, and often looks at the distant mountain in a daze. She also tries to go out, but mother does not permit it. One day, Remy awakens to a threatening note scrawled across their kitchen window, ordering them to leave. Mother walks out of the room in shock, and screams at the writing. Father grabs a rifle to look around the compound, the speed with which they do this suggests the practice, and the frantically whispered conversations between father and mother, imply that they have expected this kind of danger. Since no one is detected, father shouts at the air, calling the invaders to show up. While her parents are consoling one another in the house, Remy walks out to check her lovely pig. As soon as mother finds Remy missing, she runs to the doorstep, and asks her to come back. Two armed bandits appear from the horizon, and attempt to kidnap Remy. At the critical moment, father shoots down one of them, and mother stabs another one with her knife. And then she flees to the house together with Remy rescued. To ensure a long-lasting peace, father aims to eradicate all the invaders. So father and mother work together for the battle, with father hiding behind the wall, and mother tipping off the location of the bandits. And then father slings his rifle over his shoulder, and heads out to take care of things. Mother takes away the armor of the dead invaders, and locks all the doors and windows. Racked with worry, they hole up, staying quiet and away from the windows. Although all possible entrances are shut tightly, mother and Remy sweat at home while waiting for father to return. Under such a dire situation, it is even difficult for them to walk to the washroom. Mother and Remy painstakingly take every step forward, and look back to ensure they are safe. Finally, they flee to a room, where mother offers Remy a bucket to do her business. Mother and Remy hug each other and spend the night in fear. Comes morning, mother is so scared that she has to carry a knife around the house. The noise outside the window makes her even more nervous. She approaches cautiously with her knife and looks closer, only to find their pig snuffing at the window. As soon as she feels relieved, Remy suddenly calls her name. To her shock, the invader is pointing a gun at them, introducing himself as Jerry. The soft-spoken but intense intruder explains that he is only reclaiming his rightful home. Jerry offers them two choices, to leave or to stay. Mother dashes out of the house with Remy in her arms. Although Remy begs mother to leave in tears, she does not heed her words. Instead, mother sneaks back to the house, waiting for a chance to assassinate Jerry with her knife. However, Jerry comes fully prepared, and he has already figured out her move. In their struggle, Jerry pulls mother's hair, and drags her to the floor. To retaliate, mother stabs his lap hard with her knife. Surprisingly, Jerry remains calm, and promises her that as long as they can live at peace with one another for 30 days, he will give her a gun for revenge. He can help the settlement thrive again, if the family will let him stay. It is an offer they might not be able to turn down, if they want to live. Knowing that she cannot fight him, mother has to give in. She requests to hold a funeral for her late husband, and it is granted. After burning father under a rock pile up on the hills, Remy again asks mother to leave this place. But mother is unwavering in her decision, for she thinks that the outside world is much more dangerous. So no matter how challenging it might be, they have to survive and thrive in the existing conditions. Remy begins to count down the 30 days. Each day, she draws a bar on the windowpane. She is looking forward to the end of the trial, and leaves this compound by then. Observing Jerry is another routine Remy does. One day she peeks at him through the skylight, and finds him putting all the guns in the underground compartment. She also checks Jerry's bag during his absence. From there, she discovers a gas mask and a portrait of a ceased invader, which stirs even greater curiosity in little Remy. Jerry knows his way around fixing up the place, so things in the house are resumed to normal conditions. Mother is happy that water consumption is no longer an issue. Remy's dull and boring life is brightened up by a robot discovered in the basement. At first, mother worries that a monochrome crate with mechanical legs would harm Remy, but Remy even befriends it. 
The arrival of Jerry and Robot makes their life in the desolate desert more colorful. As they get closer, Mother reveals to Jerry that she comes from the Earth, and has to kill Jerry's father for survival. Jerry does not hold any grudges, and he also promises that he would not hurt Remy. As a widow, Mother is caught in an ethical contradiction, if she should take Jerry as her partner. Sometime later, Jerry asks Remy about the portrait in his bag. Remy is too nervous to reply anything, but Jerry claims that it is not a big deal, and he does not mind who takes it away. Matters turn more complicated for Remy, as she catches a glimpse of a hormone chip between Mother and Jerry. Mother does not reject him like before, and the two even kiss each other in the kitchen. Their intimacy has driven Remy sad and mad, for she thinks that Mother has already forgotten about Father, and betrayed the family. In her grief, she hugs Father's clothes and finds comfort in sniffing them. To her, it most likely feels like another stab in the back, further to fueling her already adventurous impulses, that are already barely able to be contained. The next day morning, she packs up her bag and leaves the house. Without any compass, she decides to go straight in the direction of the sun. Robot has been following her, but Remy chases it off. Out of frustration, Remy cries out that it is better for Mother and Jerry to build a family without her. As she continues walking, she realizes that she could see her own reflection. She reaches out her hand to touch it, and finds that it is a transparent wall. It turns out that the place where she lives, is enclosed by a transparent cover. Remy bursts into tears, she cannot believe that it is impossible to leave such a place. And then she journeys to a cave that comes with a switch on its door, Remy presses on the button, and the door is open, revealing a dark and gloomy cave. Just when Remy hesitates, she hears Mother calling her. Thinking of Mother's betrayal, she plucks up the courage to step into the cave. Since it is too dark, she takes out a small lamp for light. Unexpectedly, the cave door automatically closes, after she walks a short distance forward. As the door is shut, no more sunlight shines into the cave, making it more intimidating. Now that Remy cannot retreat, she can only press forward. All of a sudden, light is shed ahead and he wants to step forward to see what it is. Then a black figure appears in front of the light. Frightened, Remy crawls back and finally falls unconscious. She awakens in her own bed at home, realizing that her first escape from home ends in failure. She is still curious about the outside world. But Jerry tells her it is a much worse place than this. Remy does not utter a word, but she disagrees with what Jerry says. Gradually Remy does not conceal her unhappiness. So Mother comes to give her some comforting words, Mother reassures Remy that her immense love for Father and Remy remains steadfast. The next day, Mother plays the guitar besides Jerry, which reminds Remy of the sweet time they used to have. Unable to accept Jerry as a replacement, Remy runs away in anger. She hides in the storeroom, and cries out that she hates Mother. To her surprise, her gentle mom does not spend time pacifying her. Instead, Mother returns to the kitchen, and continues with her house chores. When 30 days are up, Jerry passes a gun to Mother in fulfillment of his promise, and walks to the hallway. Mother picks up the gun and pulls the trigger, intent on killing Jerry. She attempts to rationalize her intimacy, by mentioning that she does everything for her daughter. To her dismay, this is merely a test set up by Jerry, and there is no bullet in the gun. Failing his trust, Mother proceeds to commit suicide, and Jerry rushes to stop her. He comes back with injuries, and sadly Mother has died. By now, Jerry has become Remy's enemy held responsible for her parents' death. Filled with hatred towards this extra man, Remy runs with all her might and strength to skip his reach. However, Jerry captures Remy and begs her to remain by his side. As the years go by, Remy has grown into a beautiful and charming young lady. Under her care, pigs and vegetables have multiplied. Furthermore, she has learned to use a gun. Jerry informs her that he will travel to the valley on the second day. Without his presence, Remy feels unease, so she also comes to the valley armed with her gun. Over there, she sees Jerry soaking himself in the lake. Before he leaves, he tells Remy to try the lake. Remy dips her fingers into the lake, and finds it very cooling. So she dives into the lake to relax and take a shower. Back to home, Jerry presents Remy with a portrait of Mother. Reminded of her late mom, Remy sheds bitter tears. Jerry takes her in his arms, and suddenly begins to tongue massage her. Remy realizes that Jerry's intentions towards her, grow more and more sinister, so she walks away quickly. Jerry then delivers the portrait to Remy, leaving it beside her room door. Remy has decided to flee Jerry, so she takes out the gas mask to try it. Over meals, Jerry and Remy have a discussion about their relationship. Remy firmly rejects Jerry's request to play a hormone game with her, but Jerry insists that it is for the future of mankind. 
When she feels greatly disturbed, Robot approaches her to entertain her, but Remy refuses its company. Back to her bedroom, Jerry is seated on her bed, holding to the gas mask. As Remy's intention to leave is exposed, Jerry is furious. During their fierce argument, Jerry puts Remy to sleep with the mask, and sheds tears after she collapses. Out of sympathy grows his evil thoughts, so he ties Remy up on her bed. Remy wakes up in shock, and struggles to break free. To suppress her movements, Jerry shifts up to her bed and rides on her. He holds up Remy's face and tells her to calm down. When all that proves futile, Jerry pulls out his gun, and points it at Remy's head. In terror, Remy stops screaming. When Jerry almost molests Remy, Robot shows up from nowhere, and shoots Jerry right in his throat. Despite his bleeding pain, Jerry fires at Robot in a fury. While Robot breaks down, Remy takes the opportunity to untie the rope, and gives Jerry another shot. Remy is clear that if Jerry continues to live, she will never be able to leave the compound. Following Jerry's death, Remy is left alone in the house. Out of frustration, she does not clear up the mess back home, but cries out to the sky if anyone is nearby. Of course, she does not receive any response. And then Remy tries to fix Robot, her good friend since childhood. Spending a few days in silence without any help, Remy feels that she is torn apart by loneliness. Though she avenges the murder of her father and mother, she could not live without the company of her enemy Jerry. Hence, Remy makes up her mind to flee this suffocating place, full of painful memories. This time round, she leaves Robot behind to watch over the refuge. Looking back at the house where she has been residing for years, she does not have any lingering. Again she stands before the cave, where she once visited at a young age. Fully equipped, she walks through the long and stark passage without fear. What awaits her at another end of the cave, is still wilderness. Like what Jerry says, it is not much different from her farmstead. Remy is unsure what lies ahead of her journey, but she is determined to move forward. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.